Thomas Sankara was only 37 years old when he was shot and killed by soldiers on October 15, 1987, after a bloody coup that saw his close friend Blaise Kampaore take control of the country. Popularly known as Africa's Che Guevara, Sankara has remained somewhat of an icon across Africa and an inspiration to many Pan-Africanists. As president, Thomas Sankara renamed the country from Upper Volta to Burkina Faso, which means land of upright people. 34 years after his assassination, the mystery surrounding Sankara's death is yet to be solved. Those allegedly involved are yet to be prosecuted and are still at large. Now, the begging question is, who killed Thomas Sankara? Born Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara on December 21, 1949 in Yako, French Upper Volta, Sankara was the third of ten children to Joseph and Margarete Sankara. His father was of mixed Morsi Fulani heritage, while his mother was of direct Morsi descent. Sankara attended primary school at Bobo Dilasso, where he took his studies seriously and excelled in mathematics and French. He attended church regularly and several of the priests were so struck by his energy and eagerness to learn that they pushed young Thomas to continue on to seminary school after completing primary school. As a matter of fact, Sankara's Roman Catholic parents wanted him to become a priest, but he chose to join the military. The military enjoyed widespread support at the moment, having recently deposed an unpopular president. Young thinkers saw it as a national institution that might assist to control the inefficient and corrupt bureaucracy, counterbalance the overbearing power of traditional leaders, and help modernize the country in general. Furthermore, admission to the military college would come with a scholarship. Otherwise, Sankara would be unable to afford the cost of further education. He took and passed the entrance examination. Thomas Sankara was 17 years old when he entered the military academy of Kadiogo in Ouagadougou with the academy's first intake of 1966. While there, he witnessed the first military coup d'etat in Upper Volta, led by Lieutenant Colonel Later General Sangule Lamizana on January 3, 1966. The trainee officers were taught by civilian academics in the social sciences. At the time, the academic director was Adama Ture who taught history and geography and was noted for his progressive ideals. Outside of his classroom, he allowed a group of his brightest and most political students, including Sankara, to participate in informal conversations about imperialism, neocolonialism, socialism and communism, African liberation movements and other themes. Sankara was exposed to a revolutionary perspective on Upper Volta and the globe for the first time in his life. He pursued his interest in music and played the guitar in addition to his academic and extracurricular political activity. Thomas Sankara, then 20 years old and approaching 21, continued his military education at the Military Academy of Antsirabe in Madagascar, where he graduated as a junior officer in 1973. Sankara was able to study agriculture, particularly how to increase agricultural yields and improve the lives of farmers at the Antsirabi Academy, which he eventually took up in his own government and country. He read a lot about history and military strategy during that time, gaining the concepts and analytical tools he would later employ in his reinterpretation of Burkina Faso's political history. Sankara also read Marxist books mastered the French language and conceptualized ideologies of the productive role of the military in a poor nation. Thomas Sankara believed an educated soldier is the best soldier. As he would say, a soldier without training is just a criminal in power. Thomas Sankara fought in a border conflict with Mali as a young lieutenant in the Upper Volta Army in 1974 and returned home a hero. But years later, he would reject the war as futile and unfair. In 1976, he studied in France and then in Morocco, where he met Blaise Campari, 
another upper voter civilian student who eventually founded socialist organizations in the country. Burkina Faso's military has interfered in times of crisis on multiple locations since its independence on August 5, 1960. In 1966, the military, commanded by Lieutenant Colonel, later General Sangule Lamizana, deposed Maurice Yamiogo's elected government. Lamizana ruled the country until November 1980, when a series of strikes by workers, teachers, and civil personnel resulted in a second coup this time led by Colonel Saye Zabo. Non-commissioned army officers revolted and installed Major Jean-Baptiste Odrago ending Zabo's brief reign. On August 4, 1983, the Odrago administration divided into conservative and radical factions with the revolutionaries assuming power. They formed the National Revolutionary Council, which was led by Captain Thomas Sankara. Sankara renamed the country Burkina Faso, which means land of upright people, a year after taking control, and ordered all officials, including himself, to open their bank accounts to public scrutiny. His government was responsible for a number of tangible successes, including vaccine and housing projects, tree planting to keep the Sahel at bay, women's rights promotion, and waste reduction in government. Burkina Faso also adopted a new flag with red representing revolution green representing hope and abundance, and a good star representing mineral wealth. Sakara led what was genuinely a post-colonial movement throughout his four years as president. He had a vision of Burkina Faso as a country where people would want to live, and he began making drastic changes that excited the younger generations while annoying many of the older ones. He had taken power away from the chiefs of the Mossi Kingdom which was one of the significant reforms he had undertaken. Despite the fact that the French had assumed control of Burkina Faso's government, the Mossi chiefs still exercised a lot of authority in the communities. Sankara wanted to put a stop to all oppression in Burkina Faso, so he deposed the Mossi and forced the kingdom to pay for the free water and energy it had been enjoying. Tensions with Mali over the mineral-rich Agacha Strip erupted in a brief border war in December 1985 under Sankara's rule. A year later, the matter was resolved to the satisfaction of both countries before the International Court of Justice at The Hague. In a coup d'etat staged by his former colleague Blaise Kampaore, Thomas Isidore Noel Sankara was assassinated along with 12 other officials on October 15, 1987. Kampaori accused Sankara of jeopardizing diplomatic relations with former colonial power France and the neighboring Ivory Coast. Sankara was also accused of plotting to assassinate his opponents. Thomas Sankara was said to be at a meeting with his council when his assassins targeted and killed him. They then opened fire on the meeting attendees, killing 12 other persons. Sankara's body, riddled with bullets, was quickly buried in an unmarked grave while his widow, Miriam, and their two children fled the country. Kompari promptly reversed the nationalizations, revoked practically all of Sankara's initiatives, rejoined the IMF and World Bank to bring in desperately needed funding to reconstruct the so-called shattered economy and ultimately rejected most of Sankara's legacy. Bliss Kompari's dictatorship lasted for 27 years before being ousted in 2014 by mass demonstrations. Many believe Sankara's friend and right-hand man, Blaise Kampare, was the main suspect behind his assassination. While there is a little doubt about that, there is more to the story. According to Prince Johnson, a former Liberian warlord who killed the Liberian president Samuel Doe and allied to Charles Taylor, Sankara's assassination was engineered by Taylor who later became Liberia's president. Also, West Africa's longest-serving leader, Felix Hufuet Boani, who had so much appetite for regime changes in the region, was also complicit as well. Until Thomas Sankara's overthrow and killing in 1987, Hufuet Boani and Sankara had a turbulent relationship. The Ivorian president would have benefited immensely from the divisions in the Burkina Faso government 
so he called Bliss Kompare the second most powerful man in Burkina Faso. It is generally believed that they worked in conjunction to overthrow the Sankara regime. Interestingly, the coup may have had French involvement since the Sankara administration had fallen into disfavor with France. In 2016, the Burkina Faso government officially requested that the French government release military documents on Sankara's death after his widow, Miriam Sankara, accused France of masterminding her husband's assassination and gruesome death. Would you love to know more interesting facts about Thomas Sankara? Do check out our next video.